This is Dennis McMahon, and welcome to Positively Vermont. And today, my guest is John Sales, the CEO of the Vermont Food Bank. Welcome, John. Well, uh, thank you, Dennis. Uh, I'm really happy to be here. And, you know, we the last time we spoke was 11 months ago, mm -hmm. and uh, I wanted to move it up a little this year because of of a letter that I received from you the other day. And just let me quote, tens of thousands of neighbors are turning to Vermont Food Bank every month for food assistance, a number that almost always rises over the holidays. And although we're not even at Halloween, uh, I, I think it would be a good idea to get a run up on this early uh, for your projects and Thanksgiving and, and certainly at Christmas. But first of all, John, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, sure. I've been here at the Vermont Food Bank for 15 years now. Um, before that, I worked for state government for about 10 years in utility regulation and in um, uh, natural resources. Um, I love what I do at the food bank. This is uh, some of the most gratifying work I can imagine um, in helping Vermonters through their everyday lives. And just um, give us a little bit of the history and the scope of the Vermont Food Bank. Sure. The Vermont Food Bank has been around since about 1986. Um, it grew up with a lot of other food banks around the country in a time when um, there was uh, some pretty deep cuts in government programs and the the local organizations that were giving food away, the, the churches and community um, organizations uh, just saw a, a tremendous rise in demand. And so they got together and created a larger entity that could source more food. And that's the Vermont Food Bank. Um, wow. We are uh, an organization that's statewide. We serve every county. And um, last year, we distributed 14.5 million pounds of food. And most of that went to community organizations. And those are the food shelves and meal sites and senior centers and out of school programs right in everybody's community. You know, in the Burlington area, um, people know Feeding Champlain Valley. Um, there's the Colchester food shelf. There's a food shelf in Winooski. Um, the food bank also does some, some direct distribution programs. We have what's called Veggie Van Gogh, which is at produce and fresh food distributions that we do in partnership with schools and hospitals all over the state. Um, there's a backpack program that partners with schools um, and some uh, community work on nutrition education and signing people up for Three Squares Vermont, um, which I would encourage all your listeners, if, if they um, struggle to put food on the table, to look into whether Three Squares Vermont is an option for them. What I'd like to say, you have a very interesting website which describes uh, what you do and how people can get involved. But one of the things that, that shocked me uh, was this statement, two in five people in Vermont are food insecure. And tell us what food insecurity means. I know it's a term that's nationwide and worldwide in some respects, but tell us what that means in Vermont. Sure. Um, yeah, food. There's a definition of food insecurity from the United States Department of Agriculture, um, and in, it basically means um, a family or person who doesn't have consistent access to enough nourishing food to live an active and healthy lifestyle. So that can mean there's a few months in the year when you know your whatever your um, your industry is maybe lays people off or, you know, there's a, a occurrence in your life, car breaks down, lose your, lose your housing, um, divorce, uh, injury or medical issue. When people find themselves making choices on what they're going to do with the income that they have and what we know from many, many years of research and experience is that food is a very um, flexible part of people's budgets. So you'll pay the rent, you'll put gas in the car, you'll make sure that the, you know, the kids have clothes, all those, those must have expenses come before making sure there's enough food in the house. Um, and so the food bank and our partners create kind of a safety valve for folks 
Um, if there isn't enough money in the monthly budget, then there are places to go where you can get food at no cost. Well, recently, uh, actually, since we last met, there's there's been a, a very important study which uh, is online uh, that's that was conducted. Uh, the Vermont Food Security Roadmap to 2035. Uh, it sounds like a mouthful, <laughs> not to be funny, but uh, I, I've seen it. It's available on the on the web. Uh, tell us what that is all about. Yeah, that's it's actually part of um, Vermont Farm to Plate, which about oh, 12 or 13 years ago, the legislature started the Farm to Plate Network. Um, and it was created a strategic plan for resilient agriculture in Vermont. And it's done some really great work. Well, last year, kind of an offshoot from the Vermont Farm to Plate strategic plan came the roadmap to food security. Because it's food, food security is not, um, there's nothing magical about it. It's, there's nothing surprising about how to do it. Uh, we just need to do the work. And so we had um, dozens of organizations and over 600 people work for months on what are the strategies that would be most effective um, to create in 2035 a Vermont where nobody is wondering where their next meal is going to come from. I mean, we do, we actually spend time visualizing that and just thinking about what Vermont would be like if everybody had consistent access to the nourishing food that they need. Um, anyway, the, 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 the roadmap, which I would encourage people, if you just Google Vermont food security roadmap, the link will pop up. Um, I encourage people to take a look. It's, it's broken into basically three sections. One about what are the things that the government and the nonprofit sector can do working together? What can we do in the agriculture space so that our farmers and food producers have a, a sustainable way to get be getting food, nourishing food to folks in Vermont. And then what can local communities do? You know, emergency planning, having a food plan, um, being prepared for natural disasters to make sure that, that, you know, we've had all these floods in the last couple of years, we had COVID, um, what systems are in place to make sure that, that people in a, an emergency situation can get the food that they need. Now, I know the USDA does studies, but what is the uh, situation now as we speak, uh, as opposed to maybe last year of the, of the uh, uh, increase or decrease in food insecurity in the state? Yeah, the USDA does a, a national survey every year about food insecurity. There's, it's a lag of about a year. Or so. so the latest numbers that came out are, are 2023 data but they showed a measurable increase in food insecurity across the country and also in Vermont. And that's not surprising to us at all because, um, you know, we distributed in, in 2023 that the food bank 12.5 million pounds of food. In 2024, it was 14.5 million pounds of food. Um, and, and this is, you know, the food bank isn't all of the food that goes out into the charitable food network by any means. So we know there are more people coming to our partners and coming to our distributions. Um, and that's been really consistent. There was a, a huge spike during COVID, of course. And then things started trending down. Um, and then with, uh, with the, the rise in inflation, which has leveled off now, um, and the, all the, the floods and cascading crises here in Vermont, we saw that number go up again, and now it's pretty much staying at that high level. Um, we know that families are struggling, and I think if you, you're you out talking to your neighbors or people in your community, you talk to teachers and ministers, um, you will hear the stories of families that are just having a hard time making ends meet. One of the things I think anyone can notice is, is the increase in prices, uh, particularly in things like meat. And uh, I, uh, can you expl explain what's going on there or, and how yeah, there, can people deal with that? Yeah, it's really, really challenging. And it's, it's interesting because oftentimes things are things that impact people with low incomes don't impact people with high incomes. 
but the the rise in food prices um, during the, the latter part of the pandemic and really right after um, has been something that everybody notices. I think depending on the food items, prices have gone up between 20 and 30 percent over the last four years. Food inflation is way down, like overall inflation is right now. Um, but those prices that went up haven't come down yet. So we're all seeing higher prices at the grocery store. And again, if you have limited financial resources, you're making choices, right? You're making choices about the types of food you buy. Um, you know, you can go from the sort of in the grocery store, if you look at like the cereal aisle, you know, the top shelf is the name brand cereals, the Kellogg's, and then and then you get to the store brand. And then in the bottom shelf, there's like the big bags of generic um, cornflakes. And, you know, people can move down. And what's gotten to the point where there's no lower shelf, right? There's no cheaper food out there that's available um, that's going to really sustain us. Um, the, the solutions to that um, are really beyond what the food bank can do. And that's why we have things like the, the Roadmap to Food Security, um, which helps us partner with organizations that do different kinds of work. Um, we really need to work on, you know, more of the macroeconomic conditions. Um, you know, we know that wages have gone up, but we know that wages have not gone up as much as prices, particularly for housing and food. And so how do we get things back into, you know, a better balance? It's never been perfect, but let's get moving in the right direction. Let's get that balance so that, so that people in Vermont, and we know that most of the people in Vermont who can work are working, um, are, are making enough money to be able to sustain their families. Tell us a, a little bit about the partnerships you mentioned. Uh, uh, what, what organizations or individuals does the food uh, bank work with uh, on these issues? Yeah, in addition to um, all of our what we call network partners, and those are all the food shelves and meal sites and senior centers, the folks who get food delivered from the Vermont Food Bank or come and pick it up at one of our distribution centers. Um, we have three across the state, one in Barrie, one in Rutland, and one in Brattleboro. But the, the food security roadmap, which is a broader effort, it's the food bank, um, the, the key players right now, we're still bringing people into the coalition. The food bank, Hunger Free Vermont, which is a statewide anti-hunger um, organization that we work very closely with. Um, NOFA Vermont, Northeast Organic Farming Association, the Intervale, um, feeding the Valley Alliance, which is in the Upper Valley. Um, it's a very grassroots, community-based organization. Um, and the Vermont Sustainable Jobs Fund, which is the umbrella organization that hosts Farm to Plate and now the Vermont Food Security or the Vermont um, Roadmap to Food Security Coalition. Um, we also, we partner with all other kinds of organizations too. You know, right now with the... Um, and the unhousing crisis that's going on in Vermont, um, you know, people who who lose housing are always food insecure, always. And so we're seeing and dealing with the increase in the demand, particularly in the the geographic areas in the state where um, more people are being unhoused. I live in Montpelier. That happens to be Washington County is one of those places. And I know Chittenden County is another one. So we're trying to work with our nonprofit partners and with the state and local governments to um, ensure that there's food available for folks who are no longer housed. And uh, I noticed uh, there's a logo from Feeding America on uh, your item. Should tell us about the, that partnership. Yes, um, that's a very important partnership. The Vermont Food Bank along with uh, 197 other food banks around the country are part of the Feeding America network. Um, so Feeding America is a, a national nonprofit organization. It's actually the largest nonprofit organization in the country. Um, and Feeding America helps us tremendously um, by like, raising money at the national scale. And, and they, I would say, I think it's about... Um, uh, 40% of Feeding America's budget 
goes to grants to food banks across the country um, to help us do our work. Um, Feeding America is also a great partner in sourcing food. So at the national level, they have relationships with huge companies, you know, the ConAgra's, the, the Tyson's, the Walmart's, the Kroger's, all the grocery chains. And they drive those partnerships down so that we can, um, as a, a, a Vermont food bank, we can have access to food from all over the country, um, both donated food and food we can purchase. Um, so for instance, um, oftentimes in the winter, we'll, we'll want to get some, some like citrus fruit into Vermont um, for our network. And so we can go out into the Feeding America network and we can get a load of oranges or pineapples or melons. Um, we have to pay the, the freight, but the food is donated and we can bring it in from Texas or from Florida or from the port of, of uh, Philadelphia. Um, so Feeding America is a, an essential part of the whole system that really goes from, from that national scale down to our neighbors who are who are going to food shelves and meal sites um, and are helping us understand how we can better serve the needs that they have. Great. Tell us about, uh, it's now uh, in October, late October. Tell us about some of the events uh, that the Vermont Food Bank has coming up. Well, I would say most of the events are put on by local organizations. So look and see, you know, keep, keep an eye on your front porch forum and your, um, your local newspaper. Um, there's a lot of harvest festivals. There's um, actually, we, we just missed it, but there is um, the Vermont Food Bank Day at the Champlain Valley Fair. And this year, um, we, it's, if people bring a couple of cans of food or non-perishable food items, they can get a discount on, on their, their admission. And this year we saw a record number, a record amount of food and funds raised at the Champlain Valley Fair. So obviously people are responding to the need in their communities. Um, but I really want folks to, to know that it's important um, to financially support the food bank at the statewide level and also your local um, food shelf or meal site who also has expenses. They have to turn on the lights and um, they have to purchase some food. A lot of them have have relationships with local farms or local stores where they purchase things like eggs and milk um, and meat, things that are perishable. And you want to have them close to home. It's great to have Vermont foods available to all Vermonters. That's great. Tell us about some of your needs right now, uh, whether they be legislative or financial or organizational. Uh, tell us about some of the uh, hard goods, so to speak, uh, cash, uh, legislative support, uh, anything of that nature. What do you need right now? Yeah, thanks. I mean, we really, we, we could distribute more food if we had access to it. Um, and we work on that. You know, we, we source food by the truckload. Um, so we don't, we don't, as the food bank generally do food drives, we do with the Champlain Valley Fair, but um, most of those are, are local and go to our local partners. Um, and we can turn that dollar um, by buying by the truckload into much more food than an individual can by going to the, the grocery store and purchasing food and then donating that. Um, and so we're very efficient with every dollar that gets um, donated to the Vermont Food Bank. And we rely on people in Vermont to fund our operations. Um, you, you talked about government funding. We get um, from the federal government, uh, it's about maybe half a percent of our operating budget from two federal programs that we run. Uh, last year, we had been in the legislature seeking $5 million in support and most of that would be going to purchase food and get that food distributed um, from our distribution centers. Um, and the legislature um, uh, allocated to the food bank 1.3 million. So that was a shortfall from what we had hoped for. Um, and we, then we just adjust. Uh, we'll be back in the legislature this year, um, again, asking for $5 million. And, and um, 
we can talk, uh, if people reach out, we can talk about the details of that. But I would like to talk about the, the legislative agenda of the, the food security roadmap, because all of us have come together and, um, you know, the, there are goals and there are strategies and there are specific legislative asks that are being made. Um, we had some success last year. There was um, funding for NOFA's crop cash and farm share program, which gets local Vermont produce and and um, and meat to Vermonters who can't couldn't otherwise afford them, the local organic food. Um, there was a bill that passed that um, provided more funding to 211, which is the social services um, hotline. And it wasn't open 24 hours a day. Um, and we thought it was very important that that resource be available to folks when they need it. If someone's unhoused at midnight and they need to find a place to stay, they can't leave a message that doesn't work. So 211 is now funded um, full time. And, um, and we're working on things like... Uh, like emergency planning and and supporting some federal options. There's a restaurant meals program with Three Squares Vermont where certain folks who get Three Squares Vermont benefits would be able to use those, redeem them at restaurants and get prepared meals. Um, so we're working with the state to try and implement that part of the national SNAP program, which here is Three Squares Vermont. That's great. What we like to do here on Positively Vermont is to uh, tell our viewers, how can they help? What do you need uh, from viewers or from the public at large or from officials who will be presumably going back uh, in January to the legislatures? What do you need from the public? Um, so three things. Donate, which I talked about. And as you mentioned, our website earlier, it was just redone. It's a great resource. It is vtfoodbank.org. Again, vtfoodbank.org. I would encourage people to go there, if, particularly if you need help. There's a lot of great resources. Or if you want to give help, there's also a lot of great resources. Um, and then volunteer. Um, volunteer for the food bank. You can find the resources on our website. Um, or volunteer at your local, um, your local food shelf or meal site or some way in your local communities. There are lots of opportunities. And then advocate. Um, it's surprising to me every year, even though it shouldn't be, um, that we have to re-educate our lawmakers on the issue of hunger in Vermont and the fact that there are um, tens of thousands of Vermonters who need some assistance to make those ends meet on their budget and that food is one way that we do that in Vermont. Um, there will be opportunities if you keep an eye on our website uh, and keep an eye on local media um, to, to get involved in advocacy, uh, maybe even go to the state house and um, testify. It's not as intimidating as it seems. Um, everyone puts their pants on one leg at a time. Um, and, uh, and really just talk about this, be aware of it. You know, particularly with the holidays coming up, you know, this is always a, you know, as we say with winter coming, people needing to fill their fuel tanks, um, put winter tires on the car, it's a, it can be a time of stretch budgets and we do see more people coming into the charitable food system. Um, and so, so be aware, help in your local community, help at the statewide level and just be part of the change that's going to get us to a food secure Vermont in 2035. Well, that's great. Well, thank you, John. We'll be keeping uh, an eye out for anything that we can uh, put on Positively Vermont and uh, I want to thank you for being the usual great, enthusiastic guest, and also thank you for your tremendous hard work. It's it's appreciated, uh, I'm sure, by so many people, including uh, people who follow that. So thanks very much again, John. Thank you, Dennis. I appreciate the time, and uh, thanks to all the people out there who support the food bank, and particularly folks who go and get the help um, to make sure that there's food on their table. I appreciate the work that you do. Great job. Thanks very much. And this has been Dennis McMahon. You've been watching Positively Vermont uh, with my guest, John Sales, CEO of the Vermont Food Bank. Thank you for watching.